<clears throat> in today's video, we're going to be talking about the beginning and the end of lesson plans. In this video is the anticipatory set and closure. <clears throat> now, you know um, there's multiple ways of talking about the anticipatory set. Uh, that's how I was taught, so I'm always going to call it that. But you know, you've got advanced organizers and mental sets and all kinds of other things. And then closure is how you round out a lesson. <clears throat> Here's our anticipatory set for this. Take a second, pause the video, and fill in the blanks in your mind. Okay, now that you've unpaused the video, um, let's go on. Anyone interested in television is concerned about commercials. It's hard to be imagine television schedules without them. Although they can sometimes be bothersome, we tolerate them. When things go wrong, we sometimes blame the product instead of accepting responsibility for the consequences ourselves. Now, this little activity comes from Carol Cummings. <coughs> Um, her book was 1990, uh, there was an uh, updated edition 2001, but the idea here is um, you probably did what I did. You probably read it and said, anyone interested in teaching is concerned about commercial, or is concerned about classes. It's hard to imagine teaching school without them. So it's it's one of those things you know the paragraph is kind of awkward and doesn't make sense, but you think about it in a teacher perspective. And what happens is we bring our baggage. We bring the things that um, happened during the day with us. So we call this the backlog. Um, and there's also with the backlog, there are expectations. So think about this for a second. Another thought activity. What were you doing before you started watching this video? Probably was not spending hours thinking about how great this video is going to be. Now think about this. What will you be doing before the next class? Um, are you going to go get coffee? Are you going to be, you know, uh, hanging out with your friends? What stressful things will influence you before class starts? Some of you uh, might trip on the stairs on the way up and spill some coffee. Or you might get an email from a friend that, you know, they're going to move away and you're not going to get to see them again. All of these things are consuming your attention. And you also have a set of expectations. Class is going to be boring or exciting or whatever. What we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, alleviate a backlog and create expectations through the anticipatory set. Now, good anticipatory set or mental set or advanced organizer or whatever it's called, um, and many schools call them a variety of different things, is designed to help your students shift gears and focus on the day's objective. And I like the analogy of shifting gears here, uh, because if you've ever driven a standard, if nothing helps you shift gears in the standard, you get a lot of grinding and groaning, and maybe you never actually even get into the gear you were trying to. Uh, but if you use your clutch to help you shift gears, then you can slide into gears really easily. So the uh, anticipatory set is much like a good clutch. So questions to ask yourself. What is the objective for the day? I might have a whole bunch of objectives for the lesson, but what's the overarching whole objective for today? What activities are included in today's lesson? So I have my outcome that I'm expecting. What are the students going to be doing to get to that outcome? What are the key concepts the students need to know? So we have our final outcome. How are we going to get there conceptually? And finally, how can I connect today's learning to the students' lives? You always want to be hitting as many of these as possible. Um, and always, always, always focus on the objective. So here's some examples. Dump trash on the floor and investigate it. So with this example, um, 
what you're doing is you're dumping it out and the students are looking through it and you're trying to formulate a story about who was here before. Um, and the next one, ask students about where they would like to shop. Do they like to shop at the mall? Do they like to shop at, you know, Macy's or wherever they like to shop? And then ask them to describe the store, the building. And this might be a good precursor for a math lesson. Uh, show them all of the instances that math was used to build that structure and put that store together and keep that store running. Uh, you can also review the main idea from yesterday or the previous class if you don't meet every day. Uh, you can ask, what's your favorite kind of candy? And my thought here was um, a social studies lesson. So what's your favorite kind of candy? Oh, I like Snickers. Say, okay, let's look up the ingredients for Snickers. And show that the sugar in there is corn sugar. Where does corn come from? Agriculture. And then we're off on our uh, journey of the Midwest. Does your family have any traditions? This could be a good um, thing near the holidays. So uh, Thanksgiving and uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, all of those things. I'll talk about those traditions and explore where do traditions come from? How do people express those traditions in literature? And finally one, um, use these words in a sentence. Bob, duck, and toss. And a lot of students, the first time they encounter these three words, are going to think, my Uncle Bob was out duck hunting, and he got a duck, but he had to toss it away because of blah, 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 something like that. But today's lesson, we're talking about these words in a different way. We're talking about uh, bobbing, ducking, and tossing. So the pro these uh, three action words and how they're related. Now set guidelines. Your anticipatory set should be quick. It shouldn't take more than three minutes. You want your students on board from the beginning of class, not from halfway through. Your attention getter might be a, a long attention getter, but your anticipatory set should always be quick. Which leads us to the last part can either be before or combined with the attention-getting activity or statement. So if you're going to be doing something to get the student's attention for class, your anticipatory set should either be part of that attention-getting or already done. So for example, maybe you want to review yesterday's lesson and then uh, pop a balloon to talk about air pressure. Popping that balloon is going to get a lot of attention. The anticipatory set gets the students all prepared for that attention getter. Now we're moving on to closure. If you'll remember the beginning of the semester, I talked about the magical door that is the door of the classroom. Uh, it only works one way. Once you go out the door uh, is when it works. And what it does is it magically erases everything from your mind that happened for the previous uh, 45 minutes or hours or however long you were in that class. The magical door erases everything. And part of the way it does this is through uh, the world crashing back down on you. During a good lesson, you're not focused on what's happening outside. You're focused on what's happening around you. You're focused on learning. You're focused on engaging new ideas. Or you go back out the magical door and all of a sudden your friends are saying, Hey, Billy's looking for you. He's going to beat you up. Or, oh, did you see Susie? I think she was looking at you. Or, oh, don't forget your mom said you got to go to the dentist today. Whatever it is. All of that comes crashing back down and just wreaks havoc with your, your ability to remember what's going on in class. So, to overcome the magical door, you need a magical soldier. Now, the magic soldier is closure. And what this does is it helps to validate what happened in class so that your students will be able to remember what happened and it will increase retention. Um, closure is really a reflection on learning. What did we learn today in class? Uh, it can also be a uh, check for understanding. So uh, maybe in a math class, you put up a problem on the board 
that the students should be able to solve if they understood everything you talked about. It might be a moment of making connections to prior learning. Say, okay, now that you're experts at um, historical inquiry, what does it remind you of? Does it remind you of anything you've done in any of your other classes? Organize learning into something meaningful. So, we, we let's say we're talking about sides of 3D shapes. How do we make meaning out of that? How do we put everything together at the end of class so that it makes meaning? Um, and finally, it can just be a summary of ideas. So, tell me three things you learned today in class or write a summary about everything you learned in class. Here's some examples. Um, for Cornell notes, write a summary of today's notes. Um, you can do something like name two things you learned today and then go around the um, class or students write down something. You can do a ticket off the door. Um, you can ask the students to answer the question or finish the sentence, something I'm excited about is, or the uh, kind of converse is something I still have questions about Blank, blank, blank. Um, name something you learned today. This is different from the first one because it's a verbal response. So the first time I mentioned it, I had intended to talk about writing down that. But now it's a verbal response. Um, you could also do explain today's lesson to a friend. Uh, you could do a gallery walk. You could do a quiz. You could do a review of ideas. So this is a teacher-directed closure. Or what can you come up with? Think about this for a minute. What kinds of end-of-class activities can you come up with? So in class, we're going to be adding an advanced organizer to your lesson. Remember to follow all the guidelines. Uh, we're going to add closure to your lesson as well. And now for closure. How much time do you think you should devote to closure? Now this isn't planning time. This is class time. So how much class time do you think you should devote to closure? All right, we're going to have fun.